Moshi Moshi Miami Gamers and welcome back to Genshi Impact. Today we're gonna finish up doing the Nets Hangout of it. We do got that to deal with and that one too to deal with. Last time we we're talking with an officer, so this time we're gonna talk with the net this time for this one. Hmm. Something on your mind still? Huh. Was that obvious, huh? Well, even though it didn't feel like Bernard was lying. After talking to him, I'm getting an even stronger sense that something's not quite right. We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. Let me activate deduction mode and consider things again from the top to see if we can find anything new. Is there still anything unresolved or strange that we should try to consider? Yeah, I was oh yeah, we do. Um, let's see. Um, we got the top, maybe the bottom one though. There was an unexplained part in the operation of the trafficking wing. Well, we've discovered that Bernard is responsible for the trafficking, while Pierre deals with supplying the goods. Is there something else in this scheme that we're missing? Hmm. Oh, we got this to deal with. Okay, let's go. Is there anything else that is difficult to explain? Hmm, maybe communication. There's always community in writing. All those that has been burned. So we can no longer confirm this or trace anything. Okay, that's true. So, hands off. Hmm, what would prove that Bardot and Pierre could turn their hand off by passing floating barriers to each other on open stretches of water? Okay, that's done. Connection? Any, any passengers of the Laveo family would probably have a number of connections outside of Fountain. Hmm. Well, hold up, let me check the others too. According to Chivalry's investigation, Pirio has been formally remade for his snag relationship research and can no longer get any materials for it from the Falte Research Institute. Okay, um, let me check this out real quick. Barter can be considered for his work after completing a shipment. No sussy records would be left as long as he receives the funds as an individual rather than do the Hill Society. Hmm. Probably submit this. Yeah, hey, that's crazy. I got it right. Oh, wait, nope, never There's mind. No need to rush. Let's see if we can find any other suspicious points about this case. Right, right. Um, about what we found in Poisson. The Marachose Phantom found Bonnie and the Lefevere pendant at Pierre's residence. That was the beginning point of our investigation. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, we do. We got more to read, actually. Why is we be a sussy bucker? The end of the veiled. The Viva is an influence on Fatin, and even the innocent section became target of revenge. But Pierre just carried the pendant with him as if it was an ordinary piece of jewelry. Associate. Hmm. Let's see. This part of the pet handoff. Oh. Since we're getting close to something, Pierre became the key sussy suspect in the case because of the sussy cat and the suspicious pendant. Hmm. Is that one, isn't it? Why would he leave such an yeah, we got it for us to follow when he took so much care to not leave any traces of imitation synth in his home? About Barnard's letter. Bernard claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. Is there something wrong with the letter? Probably. What's sussy about the letter Bonner received? Hmm, let's see. Escape location. Let's start with that. The letter didn't mention Pierre hiding spot, although it makes sense that Pierre wouldn't want anyone to find him. I mean, yeah, why not? Regardless of whatever he sent in honestly or secretly delivered himself, it's no longer something we can follow up on him. The last cat, Bonnie. Bonnie has already been on the loose for a few days when we found her yesterday morning. That means that she had already broke free when the letter was written. Now, we do have the letter puppets to think about. If the point of the letter was to tell Bonnie to get the guys, then why didn't it someone but the Bonnie? Eh, maybe that one. If Bonnie had imitation synth in her body, then she was a liability that had to be recovered at all costs. But if she wasn't carrying anything, then it would have made sense to tell Bernard not to worry. And thinking about it, Bernard only attracted our attention in the first place because he came to look for Bonnie. Could it be that the person I mean, yeah. who wrote the letter also knew nothing about Bonnie's whereabouts? Or they had a separate goal entirely? Probably. Now, what do you think about that close case? No, if that's done, then anything different from we talk to them next? Now behave, and follow me to the interrogation room. Ugh, that hurt. Ow! 
Okay, we're well, already done this already, so I'm going to win on this. Okay. Ooh, hey, look, we got some clues. It's higher this time. Okay. No, we can't let her get away. Hold it right there. Uh, is there something else you need from me, Traveler? Body and Perry, they wouldn't be acting alone, would they? Huh? I see. It all makes sense now. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Look, even our confessed criminal here has no idea what you're saying. Because he has been kept in the dark all along. And I assume it's the same with Pierre. Hmm, and Pierre thought he was taking orders from Bernard. Hmm. Uh, but for all this time, neither of them knew. <sighs> that never quite added up for me. Why did Pierre feel compelled to return to his home with Bonnie and the Pendant and make them so easy to find for the Marachose Phantom? Hmm. Any animal Pierre would see from the floating barrel should have been taken directly to his base. Both of these things are in stark contrast to his usual meticulous and vigilant behavior. There's only one reasonable explanation. He was following orders. Just like Bernard, he probably received the following instructions right before the Phantom came knocking on his door. Bring the cat and the pendant, and our undercover agent will be sure to help you. Unbeknownst to him, however, the third person who wrote that letter to him had long decided to sacrifice him and Bernard to save themselves. They instructed the two men to communicate through letters and burials simply so that they never get to meet each other. What? You can't be serious! There was a third person involved? If you focus only on Bernard's testimony, it's easy to believe that only Bernard and Pierre were working together. The case appeared extremely simple. Bernard did the trafficking, Pierre the imitation synth production, drugging, and stuffing. With everything accounted for, the third person will then be cleared for our sus. W Wait. But that doesn't make any sense. If that's the actual truth, then as soon as Pierre is caught, he'll explain his side of the story and the third person will... Yep, which is why the third person made sure that Pierre would never be found again. Once they had instructed Pierre to expose himself, the third person wrote to Pierre again, suggesting that everything had been taken care of, and he should take Bonnie and safely return to his base. And made him disappear. Of course, Pierre's disappearance at such a sensitive time immediately made him a prime suspect. Knowing that Bonnie had last been seen with him, all the third person would have to do from that point on would be to lead the Phantom to investigate the Humane Society and get Bernard to confess the truth. And Pierre would be seen have, as having gone into hiding into a persuasion of getting caught. Wait, so you're saying that the letter I received yesterday, the one that made me think Pierre was still alive, it was also sent by the third person? Is... is that what happened? I'll get back to headquarters right away and reinvestigate this case from the top. Not so fast. Shelvra said that assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. Someone among us, however, has been feeding us all kinds of preconceived notions ever since our first meeting. They suggested that Pierre's disappearance was an attempt to escape the judgment of the law, and that Pierre was a scion of the Lefebvre family. But if the disappearance is truly just a cover-up for a murder, then couldn't the true scion have been an illegitimate daughter, rather than an illegitimate son? Miss in Leon D. Lefebvre? <laughs> Haven't you taken this joke a bit too far? You're right. I did let a lot of assumptions get to my head when I first started to talk to you about the case. I'll make sure to correct my behavior. You deliberately fed us lies, but even you could not control every last detail of your plan. There was a flaw in your scheme, and something didn't quite go as planned. Getting the Marchose Phantom to notice Pierre was only the first part of your plan. Had they failed to take notice of the Humane Society, they could have cast a wider net, and you couldn't predict what they might possibly find, if given enough time. This, of course, was the main weakness of your plan. It was this special patrol and Lenny got involved. As someone accustomed to acting from behind the scenes, <clears throat> you didn't want to take the risk of personally proposing a raid on the Humane Society. So. 
you thought about pulling a few more strings, so all the suspicion would point towards Bernard and his society. A great option, of course, would be to also dispose of Bonnie and leave her body at Peary's base in the exception of a later discovery. Once the Phantom expanded their search, it would only be a matter of time before they found Pierre's base. If a cat last seen with a suspect turned up dead at the imitation synth base, it wouldn't be long until the Phantom would figure out exactly how she had been mistreated and turn their eyes towards the one organization that has been sending boatloads of animals out of Fontaine. Hmm. Uh, however, something unexpected had him at the base. It was probably during your ambush of Pierre. You didn't even have the time to check if she had already been stuffed full of imitation synth. <laughs> Still, you soon found another opportunity. Before long, Bonnie had made her way back into the city, and even popped up on the steam bird. Like Bernard, you desperately wanted to confirm the contents of her stomach, so you hurried to find us. Unlike Bernard, however, you were hoping that Pierre did have the time to make her swallow a load of imitation synth. While investigating the suspect's cat, we unexpectedly discovered that the suspect has been smuggling imitation synth using living animals as intermediaries. That was your plan, in any case. With that, you'd have been able to lead the investigation towards the Humane Society. But you were extremely unlucky. Bonnie had managed to escape before Pierre was able to stuff her full of imitation synth. That part of your plan could no longer be carried out. But as shrewd as you were, you came up with another plan right away. You manipulated the Traveler and I to help you identify Bernard as a key suspect. You know Lenny was investigating the case with Chivalrous. You used the Lepavere name as bait to get us to join your investigation. With two extra bodies around, the Special Patrol is sure to soon take note of the strange event of Bernard somehow having a reason to look for Pierre's cat. <laughs> So, what you're saying is, I went to all that trouble just for the chance that you might put forth the suggestion that would lead you down the wrong path. Of course, you did far more than that. Just now at Lumidus Harbor, were you not the person who highlighted the suspicious activities of the society? By showing us the points travel log. Oh. You even highlighted the society's activities during your compilation of the logs so they'd be immediately visible to anyone examining the records. Moreover, the logs contained no records of the Port Authority's activities. In other words, your activities. And what are you trying to suggest with that? I am insinuating that you had plenty of opportunities to transfer the raw materials for imitation scents from the harbor to a boat, and then sail over to the meeting place full of floating barrels. You opened the lid and also dub in the raw materials. As long as you did it before Pierre came from his back pickup, there'll be no one, no one the wiser. And that's how neither the trafficker nor the manufacturer knew there was a third person who supplied the raw materials and surreptitiously operated between them. Then you instructed Bernard to prepare the floating bell and the animals. After that, you slipped the raw materials into the barrels next to the animals. Pierre manufactured imitation synth using the raw materials you provided, stuffed the animals, and placed the animals back into the barrels. Having received the green light from you as Pierre, Bernard then retrieved his animals and shipped them out of Fontaine once he had received enough for a full batch. This is the truth behind your smuggling ring. I can't believe it. I never put two and two together. <laughs> You've sure got an extremely lively imagination. So what do you think she's going to say next? Hmm. Even thought about a career in writing criminal novels? Ever thought about a career in writing crime novels, huh? Hmm. <laughs> it appears that it's quite easy to predict what you'll think or say. Then if we apply that to this case, we can also think of a few places to look for incriminating evidence. You know very well that this case will not end until Pierre is found. So you will have him commit suicide out of fear and shame to end the investigation for good. That way, you can also pin the blame for the overseas smuggling activities, the theft of the harbor's confiscated raw materials, and even the Lefevere name on him. After all, dead men tell no tales. But you still wanted to appear as if he had sent that last letter to Bernard, so you have to make sure he cannot be found until after Bernard has confessed to the authorities. To do that, you either will hide his body until you've found an appropriate time to set up a fake suicide scene, 
or you'll dump it someplace where it'll be hard to determine the exact time of death. Submerged in water, for instance. The location would ideally allow you to keep the body hidden for some time while also letting you keep an eye on it. Hmm. Oh, I think the one you love to hide. There are only so many options to hide a person's time of death, after all. As long as the Phantom investigates each of the possibilities in turn, they'll surely find Pierre's remains. Especially since, as the prime suspect who will now be taken into custody, you will no longer have the time to move him or set up a fake suicide scene to cover up the murder. How absurd. And on what grounds will you order my arrest? Don't think for a second that your spouse of nonsense will amount to any kind of real argument. After all, I'm... Elodie Lefebvre! As the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, I hereby declare you as a suspect in the case. If you have any objections, you may raise them later during interrogation. Chivalrous, Lenny! That's right. We received a message from Lumidus Harbor that you were going to investigate the Humane Society. We didn't expect to run into you at such a critical moment. While at the harbor, we noticed something else extremely interesting. Apparently, you often used all kinds of excuses to swap your shifts. And if one were to match the times of your shifts to the activities of the Humane Society and those of certain foreign ships, they'd find them to be an exact match. That... That's just a coincidence. Yes, I'm sure you have already thought of a dozen different ways to explain away the suspicious activities. But as far as evidence goes... That should be enough to warrant taking you into custody. Don't worry. If it turns out that the guards are still unable to find any evidence after all this, Lynette and I will do everything in our power to clear your name. <laughs> Although judging by her reaction, I assume no follow-up from us will be needed. <clears throat> the Le Fevers were infamous for using disguise and infiltration to achieve their goals. Who would have thought that they would have planted someone within the guards? Judging from the timeline, they likely arranged for you to enter the guards before the fall of the clan. But they probably didn't expect you to turn it to your advantage and use your job to save yourself during the purge. Not only that, but you actively participated in the interrogation, arrest, and judgment of the Lefevers during their fall, thus clearing yourself of suspicion. You brutally and cruelly abandoned your allies as soon as they outlived their usefulness. Just like a lizard cutting off its own tail in order to live. You've been doing this for years. So... So you played me like a fool after all! What happened? But now I suddenly knocked out by a sudden strike. Who did it? Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> what was that word you used? Ally? You think that someone as foolish as him is worthy to call himself my ally? They were I'm guessing you did it. Scum. All of them. Not just Bernard and Pierre. But those Lefevers too. They always just saw me as a tool. I lost all my chances of a normal life just because I was born into their lot. Not only that, but because they wanted me to become an undercover agent. They stripped me of my name too. I had to live in constant fear of them while they were alive. And even once they were gone, I had to continue to bury my heritage in my name. Always worrying that their enemies would come knocking at the door. Do you know anything about what I've been through over all these years? My life as the last Lefebvre? I don't, and neither do I care. Hmm, you saved the speech for the trial, you what? bitch. Are you... Are you for real? Aren't you a Lefebvre victim too? Elodie, you're the only one still living under the shadow of a name. That's enough. Keep your hands where I can see them and do not resist arrest. If you have more to say, save it for the interrogation room. What a joke. <laughs> what a joke! <laughs> hey! Oh, what the hell is that? Don't come any closer. What's that? <gasps> the device seems a bit odd. This one knows that it took out a pair very cool as it was made from paper machine. You know what this is? <laughs> I've secretly planted loads of explosives in the Humane Society. Just one step closer and whether they're cats, dogs, or just unlucky human employees, they'll all be blown up into smithereens. <laughs> Surely you bunch of goody-two-shoes won't let that happen, right? Hmm. 
Okay, we got different choices here. Assist Lenny, let's just sneak attack, help ship us to not load, uh, surrender. Oh, let's go for Lenny, because why not? Lenny! Come on, something good, right? That's a big number! Holy shit, that's good! Oh, right, let's I go. I can understand how you feel. Like you, we are also victims of the Lafayette clan. But if you were to endanger innocence now for your own gain, the public anger towards the Lafayvers would only rise to a boiling point, and the families of the new victims would be dead set on exacting revenge on you. <laughs> and what of it? I'll be your hostage, Elodie. What? Don't do this, Lenny. Thanks for your concern, Traveler. But we need to end all of the hate and violence arising from this clan once and for all. I'll raise my hands and come over slowly. I promise that I'm completely unarmed. I'm watching you. Don't think for a second you can pull a fast one on me. Mm-hmm. That's right. Just keep your eyes on me. Don't look away. Ah! Hey, as I thought the case in the day, she is struck by a hard blow from behind. Yep, you're an idiot. That was definitely... Bonnie? Oi! So, I was right after all. It's easier to deal with the person causing the problem than the problem itself. Why does she strike her, actually? And what about the device she had? This is it. Looks like it's just a toy. So, she really was just buffling. Guess that's probably why she suddenly flipped and knocked out Bernard. He probably knew that there were no explosives at the society. As if she had no clue, no choice but to kill to escape her life. Well, given that she never even showed her face to Bernard and Pierre, I had my doubts that she'd have gone to the society in person to plant explosives. Thank you for your help, everyone. I'll take them back for thorough questioning, and find someone better to take over the Humane Society. I might need a few statements from everybody. Would you be able to come with me? Uh, if statements are all you need, can Lenny provide them on my behalf? You lazy piece of cat! I still need to go back and explain some things to the crew. I also had an appointment with the Traveler before we got interrupted. Oh, do we? Uh... You mean we could I take a stop by your place? Ah, so you do remember. Yes, I invited you to come over to our place. Once I'm done talking with the troop, I'll make a nice cup of tea and bring Bonnie to wait for you outside of my door. Oh, okay. Look at those dead bodies. <laughs> oh, now I'm gonna hear them speak for a while. Actually, let me get between them actually. It'd be so funny. You must have spent a record-breaking amount of time in serious mode today. I can't remember the last time I've seen you like this. Is it because of a special someone? There's still a few things I'm curious about. Hmm. Based on information that we found before, Imitation Synth was first circulated on a small scale in Fontaine before becoming a large-scale smuggling scheme. I'd assume that the first offerings of Imitation Synth came from what Pierre made in his early days. But since he was not experienced with running a clandestine operation, he was soon discovered by guard Elodie. Elodie saw the opportunity to make a great profit in his work, and perhaps even the chance of making a new life for herself. So she decided to cover his tracks. She started writing to him in Bernard's name, using what evidence she had compiled and the promise of enormous profits to blackmail him into cooperating with her. Unfortunately for her, she ran into Lynette. Even though my sister doesn't like to focus too much on a regular day, Serious Mode Lynette is one of the most perceptive people I've ever known. Still, all of that thinking really saps her energy. I need to go give some statements on her behalf, so I'll leave the recharging to you. Yeah, thanks, Lenny. Well, if I get close to Shiva, see if she's talking to me solely real closely. That's kind of funny. You can leave the rest of this to me. The other guards will be joining me shortly. Don't worry, they won't have another chance to escape. Hmm, there are still a few things I'm curious about. Hmm. The materials have many other regular uses outside of being used to make imitation synth, so they're not immediately subject to being confiscated or destroyed. Are you looking at my cock for some reason? The harbor would usually just seize them for some time while the customs paperwork is filled out and approved. If approved, they'd be let through. And if not, they'd be returned to sender. Elodie probably used her position to replace a portion of the shipment with something else before sending the whole shipment back to sender. Given that the foreign merchants who sent in the shipments were probably working with her in the first place, they likely just never reported the difference in what they sent and what they received. We will, of course, continue to investigate the rest of the details of this case. Now that we've caught Elodie, figuring out the whole scheme should just be a matter of time. 
Oh boy, that's good. Now, let's go ahead to her house. Well, the house. Oh, look, with Bonnie. That's pretty cute. Hmm. Black tea and a cute kitty. Truly the best combo for standby mode. Want some? Hmm. A cup of tea, please. Mm hmm. I hope you'll like it. Hmm. About Edie's case? Not at all. Information is indeed very important. But if you were to try to collect every piece of information you come across, your efficiency would actually decrease. Plus, if you just think about it, what sounds more fun? Writing a statement or enjoying a tea party? A kawaii kitty. Great answer. That'd be my pick too. Had we not run into that case, we could have spent the entire day like this. <sighs> but now, I'm running low on both time and energy. With quality time, you should be able to recharge more quickly. You're right. I can sense it. I'm recharging very quickly at the moment. I still have a question though. Hmm. Something about her rubbed me the wrong way since the very beginning. But to be more precise, it was probably around the time when I saw Bonnie try to get away from her. Back there, Elio tried to get close to Bonnie. Elodie tried to get close, but Bonnie deliberately dodged her. Maybe Bonnie had tried to evade her before at Pierre's base. Or perhaps Bonnie just instinctively knew that she wasn't a good person. Not everyone who likes cats is a good person. But if cats like you, you're probably alright. Hmm, fair enough. Humans tend to overthink things, but cats rely on their instincts, and they're pretty sharp. I mean, just look at Bonnie. She took a liking to you the moment you met. Oh yeah. So is that probably- Yep, that's the first ending! Here we go! Adventurous, Investigator, and Cats. Your story may have come to an end for now. Okay, let's see how about you do neither. Huh? Oh, she's confused. Like, what do you mean by that? If it was that urgent, soon someone would have come looking by now. What you're saying is, since nobody's come looking, I can just keep hanging out with Bonnie for a bit longer? Is I mean, that yeah. Really okay? Hmm, okay. Well, Bonnie sure seems to like the idea. Oh, I right, get a 10 card. Picking. And it's low for some reason. Fuck! Hmm. Maybe not. As much as I don't want to, I really should be getting back. Besides, if someone does come looking for me or Bonnie and finds me just chilling out with a cat, I feel like I'd have a lot of explaining to do. Like to father? Hmm. Uh, we should have Bonnie. Yeah, why not? So we're looking for Bonnie's owner. I guess. Oh, who does that? Um, I think I'll go to the Steambird and see about putting an ad in the paper. You wanna come along? I think Bonnie wants you to come with. Hmm. Okay. She's saying meow twice. <laughs> I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's pockets or not. Turns out it was not. Let's just say that applies both to your troops and to Bonnie's owner. What you're saying is, since nobody's come looking, she said that already. That really okay? Okay, she said that. Okay, this is. That's more lower. Uh. Hmm. Besides. Okay, let's just skip to this and then. Drink reception? No, that's something else. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see this to once fate. Right. Then let's see where fate will lead me. This is like a five. Okay, let's pick one. That's a one. Okay, that is not good. That's not good. <sighs> Back to the drinks reception. There's 20 okay. cards in total. I should also mention. Okay, no, will we know nope. about this? I said it was your decision. Skipping. Skipping through. <sighs> And where's the lead? You fucking kidding? Let's just say I think you should head back to the drink reception. <sighs> back to the drinks reception. Oh wait, that's nope. a good choice actually. I right, take it back, pleasure. please. At least a five. That's big. Okay, we got something good. So we're looking for Bonnie's owner. I uh, asked about this of cards. There's twenty cards in total, numbered one to twenty. So there's only a one in five chance of drawing less than a five. Okay. I should also mention. This time the cutoff was five, but I just said that to wherever I feel like. Well, you really don't want to go back to position party. But in perspective, I said I'd only do the show if I drew a one. Fate can be pretty sneaky sometimes. Okay, we got it this time, you know. 
Um, okay. who said that? I think I'll go to the steam bird and. Okay, she already said this. My good, I'm skipping this one. Let's see how it goes. Okay, let's go for the hint though. I don't know what's going on. Uh, steam has changed. That's it. I don't get it. Good point. Oh, okay. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Um, so if anyone does, so if anyone does complete for you, they'll find you. Okay, well, assuming Bonnie hasn't strayed too far from where she went missing, there's a chance we might bump into her owner in either the Steambird offices or the restaurant. So stick around here in standby mode. Yeah, that suits me. Mm, shall we find some cat food? Oh, good idea. Bonnie's definitely hungry. Hmm. Shall we get some snacks from us too? May as well. We could be here a while. Let's find a place to chill. Hmm. When I was trying to find somewhere I could space out earlier, uh, I mean, collect my thoughts, I figured the cafe might be a good shot. Hmm. Alright then. Plan of action? Spend the whole day spacing out. Uh, I mean, in standby mode. <laughs> You're very funny, like, stand there forever. Yo, oh, that was speed one. Standby mode, do nothing in the happiness things. So that was, oh, that was it. That was short, actually. Alright, I'm getting there. Like, subscribe, I'll see you later. Sign, you know.